Easter. And indeed, Christ arose. Do you know the response? <laughs> so we celebrate today. And I want to congratulate all of those of you who got here through the rain. You know, I know it's heavy, and I want to congratulate all of you online. I am glad that you are joining us for this wonderful Easter day when we will celebrate, but we will also do some reflection. So we're gonna start with the first scripture reading that reminds us the tomb is empty. The gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back, and they entered the tomb and saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised, and he is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. 
So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid.
You really know it's Easter when you sing that song. <laughs> Join me in the prayer of confession. Jesus Christ is the love of God made flesh, the love that even death could not destroy. There is no fear in love, for fear has to do with punishment, but perfect love casts out fear. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins. Living God, your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us how to love you, one another, and ourselves. We confess that we have failed to embody such love. We turn away from you, failing to love and serve you with heart and mind and soul and strength. We turn away from others who are poor and oppressed, are different from us, or do not share our views. We turn away from ourselves, even though you made us in your image and have claimed us in Christ as your own beloved children. Merciful God, Forgive us for not having loved others and ourselves. Soften our hearts of stone and transform us into living love in the world in the name of the risen Lord. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. We love because God first loved us. In the name of Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. It's our moment for connecting, which means also our moment for blessing one another. And what a wonderful day to do that, to share with each other the good news again that he is indeed risen. So take a moment and bless one another. I'm going to go greet the choir for a change.
The Psalter reading comes from Psalm 118, selected verses. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you've answered me and become my salvation. The stones that the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
The epistle reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the first 11 verses. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that was within me. Whether then it, is, was, whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe.
Those who've heard me do the same prayer every Sunday, I'm actually going to change this morning. Please join me in prayer. Lord, on this Easter day, when we indeed celebrate that Christ is risen, may all of our hearts be tuned to you. And may we understand the calling you give to each of us. In Christ's name, amen. amen. I'm going to start by being honest. For myself and for a number of other pastors, Easter is the hardest time to preach. <laughs> How many times do you say, Christ is risen, he's risen indeed, let's celebrate. But all through the years, I've also heard people kind of question that, let's celebrate. The question is, if Jesus really is who we say he is, if he is that strong and powerful, why is the world still such a mess? You know, why aren't we saying Christ is risen, he's risen indeed, and all is right with the world? There's no way I can say that honestly because the world is still broken. We know it's broken in lots of ways and in lots of places. We've watched a war go on in Ukraine for two years, killing people, destroying the environment, all for one man's ego. Thousands have been killed in Gaza, many of them children all because the leaders of each side are more intent in annihilating each other than learning to live together in peace. It's not just violence. There's economic injustice and oppression. I was struck when the writers strike started and the CEO of one of the studios was asked, why do you get paid 23 million a year when the people who write and produce the programs can't even pay their mortgages? And I look out and I know many of you know what it's like to feel broken. Those of you who like me, have lost a loved one, no. It leaves an empty space inside that never really goes away. And I'm sure some of you have been the folk who have felt on the fringes at times, or maybe have been the victims of a bully. So with all this brokenness, what is the resurrection about? Crucifixion was forgiveness of our sins. What is God doing for us in the resurrection? The first point is giving us good news because if Jesus had gone from the grave right straight to heaven, which he could have done, we'd have no idea we were forgiven. We wouldn't know there's a new life for us. And I think that's the other part of the resurrection is that is where God gives us the opportunity for a new life. You can see that in what Jesus does after the resurrection. One of the first things he does is to reach out to the very people who abandoned him. He seeks out the disciples, hiding the twelve hiding in an upper room because they are afraid for themselves. He continues to reach out to them. When Thomas isn't there and won't believe he's risen until Thomas can see it for himself, he comes back and lets Thomas touch the wounds in his hands and side. He seeks out Peter when the men are fishing. Peter who denied him three times, and he asks him, feed my sheep. 
the very people that abandoned him, he is pulling back into his arms, his spiritual arms at least, and pointing them in a new direction. And what is amazing, we talked in the song about transformation, is that as he offers us new life, as he offered them new life, he transforms us all into people who can do far more than we think we could. Look what he did with the disciples. Thomas, well, all the stories say that Thomas was not willing to leave and go somewhere else until he kind of got pushed by Jesus. And Thomas went first to India, from India to China, back to India. I learned from a friend who studied much in China that for many years, many centuries, there was a Christian church in China. There still is one, often underground. In India, when the missionaries arrived, they were greeted with, oh, we know this story. We know about Jesus. Thomas told us. And to this day, the Thomistic Church still exists in India. Andrew, Peter's brother, he somehow made it all the way to Russia and Ukraine and is the patron saint of both countries. And somehow, apparently, his remains got sent to Scotland where he's also their patron saint. <laughs> Peter, one of my professors used to call Peter that blockhead because Peter was so good at jumping into things without knowing what he was really doing. Jesus is walking on the water, let me walk on the water. So Peter gets out of the boat and goes to Jesus and probably made the mistake of looking down and all of a sudden starts to sink. He gets rescued. Peter ends up the spokesman for the, for the 12. And history says that he was the first bishop for Rome as the church started to have a structure. And Peter was apparently the first pope. Jesus changed the blockhead. What I think the resurrection is for us it's not just the celebration that Christ died for us and frees us from our sins, but it is the promise and the offering of a new life. And indeed, Jesus himself said, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. God's been trying to teach the human race the best way to live forever. And being stumbling, bumbling human beings, we still don't get it right. But when God offers to transform each of us, God is giving us a skill, a talent, an opportunity, and empowers us to help heal this broken world. That's the other part of the resurrection. His Jesus is letting us know that we are now trusted enough and empowered enough that God calls us to help heal the parts of the broken world. And each of us is given a talent, a skill, an opportunity to help somewhere maybe only to heal one broken person. But that's what our calling really is now, to carry on Jesus' work by continuing to help heal the world in his name. Let's bow together in prayer. 
So God, we do get to celebrate on this day the wonderful news that Christ is risen. Jesus is indeed here with us in another form. And we are stumbling, bumbling human beings who frequently get things wrong. But you pick us up, brush us off, put us back on the right path. And you transform us. You change us and turn us into people who learn how to love each other and care for each other who learn how to love even a stranger, who learn how to build communities together, and who actually are trusted in healing the broken parts of your world. So God, help us to celebrate today and to know the joy of sharing in the work that our Lord has done and trust now to us. For he is risen, he is risen indeed, and shares not only his death, but his life with us. And in his name we pray, amen. Join me in the Easter worship response. We are not eyewitnesses to an event, as were Mary and the disciples. We have not journeyed through a dangerous city to take answers or consolation. We have not seen angels gathering at the rim of this day or wept in the garden this morning because we could not find him. But we are here to attest to a story that has not lost its power during 20 centuries of change and conflict. We are here because those before us carried this story as if it were precious gold, cherished it as if it were the key to a hidden wisdom. Sisters, brothers, and siblings in Christ, take your places here today in celebration and in awe. What you have heard again has the capacity to change the world. Your very presence attests to the rising up of life from the tomb of despair and to the uncontrollable power of God. It is Easter morning again, and we celebrate.
I'm looking at all the last pieces. And I'm not going to go through the announcements. You can read them on the back. But we do take a moment to talk about being generous. Yes, the church uses money, and yes, the church welcomes gifts of money. But we know that's not the only gift of generosity any of us can give. We have our time, we have our talents, we have all kinds of gifts to share with one another. And those are the gifts that often heal people. So let us celebrate today in part by finding a way to be generous, even if it's just saying hello to a stranger. And we do have one other little bit of generosity that has occurred. So I'm going to embarrass a couple people. You. Eddie. Yep, you. Laura. I just need the wrong name. Laura. Angie isn't here, but I want you to see your staff. Because I want you to know, Holy Week is a tough week on staff. How many hours did you do bulletins? <laughs> this woman did four bulletins in eight days, which means three bulletins in the last part of the week. She's been doing all the music planning, and you just do everything. <laughs> What they do not know, and I'm going to tell you right now, is that yesterday the session voted by email. You're not supposed to come into work tomorrow. You have a paid day off. You have worked. I have seen them do incredible work this week. You have worked so hard. We decided you, oh, oh, you earned something as a reward. So please, if you see them on the way out, thank them for all that they do. Let me hold that so I can say the benediction. <laughs> ah, I am seeing the waving in the back. If you are by the register booklet, would you please pass it down the rows, the brown one. All right. We do celebrate today. We celebrate, and as our last song was saying, we have new life because he rose. And we can accept that new life and become new people and do things we never knew we could do in God's name. So as you go from here, go in peace and go sharing the joy and the news of the, cel of the resurrection and celebrating it. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.